Hey guys, welcome back to Cheryl K's Cooking Diaries. This evening, I'm going to show you how I make my Mexican pizzas. So give me just a minute and I'm going to show you how I put mine together. Okay, here we go. First of all, I use um, 80-20 hamburger. And I use the old El Paso tostada shells. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be using 12 of these because that is a whole lot for my husband and I. Um, so, it would just be a few of them. But anyway, I use the McCormick taco seasoning, the mild. I will be cutting up a tomato and some lettuce. And, of course, we're going to have a couple different cheeses and just a little bit of sour cream to go on top. And they will be delicious. Um, I think these are better made at home than I do getting them from Taco Bell. But I think Taco Bell, where I live, they discontinued their Mexican pizzas. So you can't get them there no more. But it's no big deal because we can make them right here at home. And like I said, they're just as good, if not better. So anyway, first of all, now, I boil my hamburger when I'm making tacos, whether I make these Mexican pizzas, and there's a lot of other things I boil my hamburger for. Now, I do this because it's healthier to boil your hamburger because when you strain it, you get rid of a lot of that grease. Um, now, I'm not telling you you're going to get, all, get rid of all the grease in this hamburger because you will not do that but you will get rid of a lot more of it. What I'm going to do is, is I just take my hamburger and I'm just going to drop it down in my big pot I got here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to my sink and uh, I'm going to fill it up, not all the way up, but I'm going to fill it up enough over my hamburger. But now when I do this, I crumble my hamburger up in the pot. So uh, give me just a minute. And I'll be right back. Hey guys, we're over at my stove. I've got my water in my pot. And it's just a little over half full. Because I have right about a pound or so of hamburger in here. Now like I told you all, what I do is, is I crumble my hamburger up in here. And when I put it over onto my stove, I turn my stove on high at the beginning. And once I see that it's starting to come to that rolling boil... Then I back it down to um, maybe right about medium or so, and then I let the burger boil. And it only takes it maybe, I'll let mine boil a little longer, but you know, I usually only let it boil for maybe uh, 25, 30 minutes. And um, I check it, make sure it's no longer pink or anything. So, um, but all you have to do is, when you crumble your hamburger up, set it on your stove, turn it on high, but when it gets to that rolling boil, you do need to back it down um, right then. Because if you don't, there's going to be a, like a white uh, fat, basically what it is, kind of comes to the surface. And it will boil over on you if you don't back your heat down quick enough. So, at the beginning, just stay with it. And then when you back your heat down, you can stir all that in. Just stir it in with your um, water when it starts to do that. It kind of like chicken does in the in a way. And just keep kind of stirring it like this and taking a rubber spatula if you have one kind of works best. But that's what I do because if you just let it boil and you only stir it once or twice throughout the uh, cooking time, it's going to... Um, it's going to be chunky. I mean, unless you like yours chunky, that's fine too. But we like ours finer. So um, that's just how I do ours. And I just kind of just take my rubber spatula and just do it like this throughout the whole uh, part of the cook time. I mean, I don't stand here the whole time and do this. But there's certain times I think that you can tell that you need to do this too. And um, just kind of mash it down a little bit. Just back and forth. And, um, and you just want to make sure if you want it fine that you just see how your hamburger looks. And if it looks like it's fine like mine is, then just leave it alone. Let it cook a little bit more. But you're going to have to stir it um, a few times, y'all. Especially if you want it to be finer. And So anyway, what we're going to do is, is I'm going to let this start to get to that boil that I was telling you about. In the meantime... Here in just a minute, I'm going to bring you back, and we're going to dice up some tomato and some lettuce. 
So I'll be back in just a minute, y'all. Okay, hey guys, let's go ahead and start with our um, tomato. Now, this is what I do with my tomatoes, because I'm going to dice these up. Um, anyway, so I take me an, a good sharp knife, and where the core is here in the middle, I just go around it like this, all the way down. Cut your circle, and just keep going around until you get that core out. And all you have to do, get your fingers down in there. If I cut it down far enough, guys, well, well, well. Usually it'll come out, but I haven't cut it down far enough, so that's why. So let me cut it again. Come on, now don't give me all this trouble. Do not. Oops. All right, it's out. But anyway, that's how I do mine, and usually it comes out better than that, but it didn't tonight. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> Okay, let me kind of wipe this up just a minute, guys. And then I flip mine over, oops, to the other side. After you get that core out, if you can get it out a little bit better, it'd be even better. But, oh, well, I'll get it out when I cut it up if it needs to be done. And then I take my knife and I just start cutting it. Probably easier for y'all to see if I do it this way. And I, I just start cutting it like this. And I know y'all know how diced tomatoes. I just sort of cut it in slices, like, hold it to better, together the best you can. So now we got them all in slices, then I'll just flip it around, like this. And I may have to go back through it a little bit. And then I'll just start cutting on it, on the sides there. Just go all the way across. And even if you got some big pieces, that's alright, because... We're going to go back through it anyway, so it's really not a big deal. Lay it over. Do it however you can get it diced, guys. So just go through it and cut up any big spots you see. And really, guys, I don't see no core in there now. So whatever that was it, I guess, because usually it's a little deeper than that. But I have had some that was just like that one where it wasn't as deep. Sometimes that happens, so. And I think that's good enough because I, I don't want to keep cutting it because then I'm going to have mush. So let me get my um, the thing I use to scrape up all this stuff. If it's a soft. If y'all ain't got one of these, you are to invest in one. These have this little thing here. This little pastry cutter. Been the best little thing I could have ever bought. And they're not expensive. I forget what I paid for this one exactly, but they really aren't. Um, but they're the best thing for picking up diced tomatoes, diced onion, um, whatever. And look at there. Just slide them right in there. That is so easy. It's better than I used to use. I used to use the back of a knife, and um, and then. Um, I seen one of those and I thought, oh my, that, that'd be uh, good for what I need it for, picking stuff up. Um, but anyway, there's our diced tomatoes. By the way, our hamburger meat is done. So what we're going to do is get our, um, and we'll get our lettuce. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start chopping it up. But of course, we're not going to use all this. Um, so what I'm going to do... Is I'm gonna put it into a, a gallon baggie. Once I ever get this open, I don't really like using my knife for that, but occasionally it ain't gonna hurt. And y'all, there has been some deer in our backyard this evening. We have seen a total of seven deer in our backyard this evening, and and I've got some pictures, and I'll try to share some. But they are so beautiful. Them deer were. Just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so what I'm gonna do here? Some of this, you know, of course, is gonna have to come off. Take you a little longer knife, and that's probably what I should have done with the tomato. The core of your lettuce here. What you want to do? Now I've seen people take them and bang them on the side of their counter. I don't like to do that because this is easy too. 
take your knife and start cutting in a circle and go all the way through it and just go all the way around the top of this core. But just get all the way down in there. And sometimes you may not be even with it, but it did work okay. Go ahead and pop your core out, just like that. Now, so now let's flip this back over and let's just start removing this. These come off pretty easy once you can get rid of that core. Let me see what this looks like. Some of this, this one doesn't look very good either, so I'm going to toss it. Okay. So now, I think that looks pretty good, guys. I, it uh, don't have no bad spots or, or anything like that on it, so I think we're good to go um, with this. Okay. So I'm just going to start just slicing this like this. So I'll have like pieces of it. And I wind up having like three pieces or chunks, whatever you want to say. to keep it together that piece usually always falls apart okay and then we're going to keep out some for our mexican pizzas and i think this right here would work i think that would be good to keep out and then i've got me a bag over here already ready and what i do is i stick it in my bag and this will keep it a lot fresher doing this this way by the way, guys, we've got our lettuce, so now I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this up over here, and we're just going to put this in a bowl, and uh, so we can put this on top of our Mexican pizzas, tostadas, whatever you prefer to call them. So all I do is just chop it up. That's it. And I'm sure y'all know how to chop lettuce. But anyway, I just... Go across it kind of like I did the tomato. And then let's see, I kind of flip it around if I can. Put that over there. And then I just chop on this side. It's all right. So let's rake some of this up together. All right, here we go. I'm not going to try to grab it all. I probably could have, but I just spilled it all over the place, knowing me. And there is our lettuce for our um, tacos. Or, I'm sorry, our Mexican pizzas. <laughs> I don't know where tacos come from, y'all. Hey, guys. I got the hamburger uh, strained, and um, now it's ready to go. I have transferred it over after I strained it. I transferred it over into a little pot. Um, so what we're going to do is, and it's not wet at all. There's no wetness in that hamburger. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is um, we're going to season our burger a little bit before we start adding our taco seasoning. Because we're just about ready with this. So first of all, what I like to do is take a little bit of the... Um, minced garlic and I just use a teaspoon from my silverware drawer so I just take about a level teaspoon of, of the uh, fresh garlic go ahead and put that in there a lot because uh, I'm going to use a little bit of garlic powder too alright so now um, I like to take whisk just whisk that garlic into your burger a little bit. The hamburger might get up in your whisk a little bit, but you can always tap it right back out. It's not a big deal. So whisk that into the hamburger. Okay. It just helps give the hamburger a good flavor, regardless of how you do it. All right. I'm going to use a little onion powder. Now, guys, remember... As always, seasonings are to your taste. That's how usually I do all my seasonings. I will always tell you they're to your taste. All right, we're going to add some black pepper. We're not going to add a big bunch because the seasoning packet's got stuff in it too. 
All right, now we're gonna add some parsley flakes, just a little. A couple shakes or so of that. And now we're gonna add some garlic powder. We're not gonna add a big bunch, because remember, we've got the fresh garlic. All right, that's clean. All right, so now we've got all of our seasonings in there, and we're going to whisk um, that together real good. Make sure it's combined throughout the hamburger. Um, I don't use salt, guys. It's just something that I prefer not to use. I think we get enough salt in a lot of the foods we eat, especially stuff like this or any kind of processed foods. They have a lot of salt in them. So, I don't use salt in hardly any recipe. Now, occasionally, you might see me add something. If something absolutely needs it, I will do that. All right. So, now we got all of our, all of our seasonings in there. But let me get, you're going to need one piece of the um, Reynolds parchment paper. Or you can use foil. Or you don't have to use any if you don't want to. Because they should be fine. Just take you some parchment. Just line your um, your your uh, cookie sheet or whatever you're using. Have this ready for our tostadas, and I'll set that to the side. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it over to the stove, and we're gonna start adding our taco seasoning. Uh, so give me just a minute. Okay, guys, here we go. On the McCormick's um, taco seasoning packet, they call for um, three-fourths of uh, water. So, I've already done that. I took my pot over there to the sink and measured it out. And I've, that's what I've got in here now. So, um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to open our taco seasoning packet. And we're going to pour that in there. Let me get this out of the way. There we go. It's that. And then I'm just going to stir this in here with the water and the seasonings and everything. Just mix it in good. But I. So, real quick, let me just see how this tastes. See if it's going to be right. I might need just a dab more water, but I, I don't know. I don't want it watery or anything either. So, let me see here. No, I don't think we need to add anything right now. So let's put the lid on. Let this simmer for, um, I don't know, maybe a couple minutes. But right now, I'm going to back my heat down because I don't. So I'll be back here in just a minute. Um, okay, guys, let's get these tostados on the um, bacon dish, cookie sheet, whatever. I'm going to call it. <laughs> bottom one is just crushed all to pieces. Don't you hate that when you get stuff like this? And just a second, guys. And the bottom one's all crushed up. And you can't do nothing with it. You piece it out or something. Lord, Lord, Lord. That's terrible. Oh, well. Nah. It's all right. We lost one, but no big deal. It was pretty busted up. Okay, so I'm going to put, he wants a couple, and I think I could go a couple too, so I'm just going to do um, about one four, <clears throat> four for right now, and then if we want more, it's no big deal. I can always come back and throw some more in. They don't take long at all. So the rest of these, I'm just going to put into a baggie so I can keep them fresh. I'm going to go ahead and get these in on a 325 degree oven and I think they only take like five minutes, something like that. So, um, anyway, um, I'll be back when they get done and show you what they look like. So, I will talk to you then. I'm going to, um, this is done, so I'm going to make me up a a Mexican pizza, a tostada, whatever you prefer to call it, I'm going to make mine up. 
But what I'm going to do, instead of making two separate ones, I'm just going to kind of double mine, make mine a double decker or something. So I'm just going to lay my shell right over here. Counters are clean, so I'm not worried about it. All right, so let's start with the meat and um, put it on there. And you know what really might work good for this? I never thought about this, but we're going to try it anyway. I'm all about trying new things, you know, see what things work for what. <laughs> try my, my cookie scooper, guys. Let's try that and see what we get, how, how that works. There we go. And then I can just take it and push it down with the back side. But I don't want a big, big bunch, you know. Makes it a little bit too much, I think. So I may have to go back to the spoon. Well, I just thought I'd give it a try. Why not? But anyway, that's plenty for the bottom half. Because I don't want to put that much on the top half. And these, you know, with these little scoopers, you get quite a bit. So I'll go back to my spoon, I reckon, guys. Let me dirty up another spoon. Okay, now... Um, I'm going to use some, let me find my, I'm going to use some of the uh, Taco Bell's mild taco sauce. I'm just going to pour a little bit of that over it. We are getting more snow, y'all. I wish this stuff would go away. I'm telling you, I can't stand it. <laughs> I love snow, but only if it only um, just covers the grass or something, I'm good with. But when it starts covering the car and the roads, I ain't on it. All right, now I'm just going to put a little, um, uh, let's see. I'm going to put a little bit of the um, cheddar cheese. I was going to have mozzarella, but meh, nah, I changed my mind. So let's put a little mild cheddar. We're going to sprinkle that on there. I'm not going to put a whole lot, but I need to put more of this on there in a minute. That'd be plenty. There we go. So put you a little cheese on top of your meat. And then put you a little bit of lettuce on there. Now, I don't put a lot of lettuce on mine. And then a little tomato. My hands are clean. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to take my other shell. And I'm going to put it on top of this. I'm going to put it on top. Somehow here. Let me figure out. This is probably the best way. I'm just going to kind of push it down on there a little bit. But kind of maybe stick to it a little bit and then we're going to do the same thing again but we're not going to add near as much so I'm going to get out a little meat oops I'll tell you I'm making a mess a little more and let's see just a minute guys let me get this fixed here Okay, I think I'll need a whole lot more burger than that because I've got quite a bit on the bottom layer, the bottom half, whatever. Okay, so there's our meat, so we're done with that. Add a little more Taco Bell um, sauce, mild, not a whole lot. I don't want to have the heartburn all night. And then we're going to add a little bit more cheese. Okay. Add some more cheese. And then I think maybe just a hair more. That might be enough. There we go. All right. There's our cheese. Put 
I've zipped up because that's going to go away next. Um, I don't think, guys, I'm going to do any lettuce or tomato. Well, maybe just a little bit. I mean, we've got to have a little bit of something on top of that cheese, right? Um, let me get this lid on here. And then we'll do the lettuce. And these are going to be good, y'all. I am absolutely, positively, 100% for sure. These is going to be delicious. And I don't think I'll be doing no sour cream tonight. All right, guys, we got all this done. So give me just a minute, and I'm gonna show you uh, show you how it looks up close. Here is our tostada, Mexican pizza, whatever. Anyway, that's it. And doesn't that look good? And mine is double layered, as you all seen me make up. So um, I'm gonna try to do a little bite, and. Uh, so y'all know how to taste if it's good or not, but I can already tell you it's going to be good because I love these anyway. That's oh, good, guys. Really good tonight and something really simple to make. So Cheryl K's Cooking Diaries and like and follow and share. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you don't mind to go to my YouTube channel and like and subscribe there as well, I would appreciate it. So listen, you all please stay safe out there and always remember to keep God in your heart and God in your life. Bye.